Tonight on The Secret Life of the Brain. One weekend, our daughter was here, and he walked into the kitchen, and he said, who are you? In its final decades, the brain is faced with a new set of challenges. 63 years old and can't tie your own shoes? Isn't that ridiculous? But it marshals surprising powers of renewal. What makes the engine go desire, desire, desire? Tonight, the aging brain. Major funding for The Secret Life of the Brain is provided by the National Science Foundation, America's investment in the future. Funding is also provided by... At Pfizer, we're spending nearly $5 billion looking for the cures of the future. We have 12,000 scientists and health experts who firmly believe the only thing incurable is our passion. Pfizer, life is our life's work. The Medtronic Foundation, on behalf of Medtronic. Providing lifelong solutions for people with chronic disease. Medtronic, when life depends on medical technology. The Park Foundation. Dedicated to education and quality television. The Dana Foundation the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and by contributions to your PBS station from viewers like you. Thank you. I have walked through many lives, some of them my own, and I am not who I was, though some principle of being abides, from which I struggle not to stray. The Brain in Old Age. In its furrows and folds, dwell the imprints of a lifetime, the unique history that makes us who we are. All we know and can remember, etched in a hundred billion neurons, cells that can last our entire lives. Neurons can live to 120 some years. What else will work for that long without going to the repairman all the time? I think what's unusual about the aging brain is the fact that it's built to withstand, you know, that many years. Somehow these neurons just keep going. And neurons are up against a potentially hostile environment. They take hits. In its final decades, the brain must contend with the slowing down of its neural circuits and with crippling diseases and injuries few younger brains ever face. But scientists have begun to unlock the secrets of the aging brain. Long thought to be defenseless to the onslaughts of time, the brain can marshal surprising powers of renewal. Three years ago, a stroke left Kent Miller with the left side of his body paralyzed. Even after months of rehabilitation, he still can't use his left arm and hand. His career as an accountant has come to an end. You know, you feel worthless. 
You can't do the things that you used to do, physically and mentally. And it's been a bear for my wife, my family. It hasn't been too easy for me either. I want to become whole, to put it simply. I want to get my arm back. I want to take something in my left hand. I want to be able to tie my shoes. Is, is that, you know, isn't that ridiculous? 63 years old and can't tie your own shoes? I'm sick of Velcro. I want shoelaces and I want to be able to tie them. What about using a toothbrush to brush your teeth? Did you use the affected hand to do that? No, I didn't do that. You just use your right hand? Yeah. When you were getting dressed, putting your arm through a sleeve of clothing, do you actively push your left hand and arm through, or do you pull it on with your right hand? I pull and it arm? on with my right. So that means your left hand just kind of sort of laid there. Yeah. At the University of Alabama in Birmingham, Kent has enrolled in a study that may help him regain the use of his arm. For Mr. Miller, um, he's still there very much cognitively, but physically he would like to have his independence back. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to work with him so that he can regain some of his independence. You know, actually, that's fairly flexible. Yeah, I know, but I can't do it. The stroke that left Kent with a paralyzed left arm struck at the part of his brain responsible for moving the arm. A blockage in an artery suddenly stopped the flow of blood, cutting off oxygen, shutting down the flow of signals. Millions of neurons were killed. Millions more were injured. The damaged part of his brain shrank to half its former size. Because the right side of the brain controls the left side of the body, Kent's left arm and leg were paralyzed. Most patients have been told after a stroke that the amount of movement that they have at six months or one year is the maximum that they're going to have for the rest of their life. Whatever they have at one year, that's it, and they're not going to get any better. But neuroscientist Edward Taub and his colleagues are teaching stroke survivors from all over the country how to revive the stricken part of their brains many years after a stroke. Let it go. Stand. Stand that finger on out. Good job. There are little spacings in here for each individual finger, so you're going to have to push, push your hand all the way in. Taub's innovative therapy requires Kent to immobilize his good hand. Now, well, let's do this again. What it boils down to is that you can't use the good one. So you've got to use the bad hand. OK, you ready to place your hand up on the table? Yeah. Kent had written off his left hand as useless. Now he will discover just how much he can do with it because of the resilience of his brain.